are you living paycheck to paycheck and feeling mo hindi ka na matapos sa mga binabayaran mo? Are you struggling to pay off debt and parang never-ending cycle na lang siya? Or are you in a good place, good income, but not sure how to handle and protect your money? So if you're overwhelmed, hindi ka sure where to begin in setting and pursuing your financial goals, then let's talk about that in this episode. Hi, welcome to Goals with Anne, helping you achieve your goals. I'm Anne and I'm here to provide you with motivation, inspiration, and step-by-step guides from real-life experiences that will help you reach your goals and live your best life. Whether you're aiming to achieve your goals around hustle, money, productivity, or achieving your ultimate life goals, this is the podcast for you. Welcome to this episode on how to set achievable financial goals. So in this episode, we'll be discussing practical steps and tips in setting financial goals and achieving them. So if you're struggling with living paycheck to paycheck, pecha de peligro palagi, feeling overwhelmed sa utang, sa mga due dates, or unsure where to begin kung okay na yung financial situation mo, where to start in setting and pursuing your financial goals, then this episode is for you. Listen till the end of the episode to learn how to take control of your finances and ano ba yung mga goals that you can set and how to start achieving them. So let me share this personal story with you. Many, many years ago, I was in a lot of debt, a lot of anxiety attacks, hindi ako nakakatulog. Ang dami ko talagang stress. I was struggling to make ends meet. I think one of my lowest points was I was in EDSA. I came from a meeting. I am on my way back to the office. We have a business back to our warehouse. Nag-red na yung gas. Ibig sabihin, malapit ng maubos yung gas. And wala na talaga akong cash noon. At hindi na rin ako maka-withdraw kasi rin 200 na lang yung cash sa bank. So, sobrang stressed ko nun. I had to call my cousin and ask if she can send me 1,000 para lang maitawid ko yung araw na yun. That was a really scary moment and makes you realize na why am I in this situation. To give you a little bit of context, before I got into that situation... I was the kind of person who always knew how to make money. I hustle. I think that's one of my passions. Pwede natin siyang tawaging bisyo that I like building things that can generate income. I was very confident in my skills and my craft. I was responsible. I can say I know what I was doing or so I thought. I was living comfortably but still... I found myself in deep debt. And that's how I learned this lesson a very, very hard way. Na hindi enough yung marunong kang kumita, na malaki yung kita mo, or stable ka financially at one point in time. Ang key nun is meron kang financial knowledge. You know how to handle your finances. You know how to manage your finances. So I was getting good business. I was getting big clients in that business. I had celebrity clients, big multinational clients. We are in a B2B business. Um, our family business back then was printing company. And medyo na-establish naman din siya ng, na-establish talaga siya ng parents ko to have like a good reputation in the industry already so when i came in because i was very passionate about marketing and sales and branding talagang kinarir ko yung pagmamarketing and getting the clients that i really want in our portfolio so business was doing good i was very confident like expand ako ng business we're financially stable we're financially healthy so i also took out loans I took out a loan for a condo. I moved to a two-bedroom condo. I got my own, my first car. And I was 22 at that time. Very, very young. But I started naman kasi working. 
at 17 years old, I was able to start earning my money doing my own hustle at 17 years old. So let's say mga 5-6 years na ako na nagtatrabaho at that time. So meron na talaga akong level of confidence and reputation also with financial institutions and creditors that I do business, I pay, I'm a, a, a responsible payer, and I can pay, right? But things turned out differently. The business crashed, and it left me with millions of debt. So, unti-unti nang nagkakaroon ng financial challenges yung business, hindi na nahahabol ng income yung bills and expenses. And I knew that at that time, I needed to make a change, but I didn't know where to begin. So that's when I decided to look hard at my finances. I can say na medyo solo flight talaga ako nun. Um, one of the reasons why it took a very unfortunate turn is because my mom passed away that time also. It was very hard because the business was kind of left alone with me. And I needed to learn on my own. I needed to learn fast. Kasi every day, meron kang suppliers na kailangan bayaran. Every day, may mga tumatawag nag-follow up sa'yo. Every week, meron kaming payroll na kailangan bayaran. So, dapat alam mo kung ano isasagot mo. And because I was really focused on marketing and sales and product innovation, wala akong alam sa accounting, wala akong alam sa finances. Hindi ako nag-focus dyan. So, how do I did it? I started assessing my current financial situation at that time. My income, my expenses, my debts. I listed them down, all of the things that I needed to do based on the priorities. So during that time, I was really struggling with keeping up with the business finances. Ano yung mga kailangan mong pakiusapan or pwede mong pakiusapan? And magkano yung short na kailangan mo to fund the bills, the things that you need to work on or find ways to find those. So I broke them down into manageable steps and tracked my progress weekly until I was able to to pay off everything. So every week I'm setting specific and measurable and achievable financial goals based on the situation that I'm in. I prioritize those goals based on the situation, the capacity at that time. And I make sure that I adjust the plan as needed and I stay motivated by having a sheet in front of my table na ina-update ko siya, piniprint ko siya every week and hina-highlight ko kung ano yung nabayaran ko na. Celebrating mini milestones. It wasn't always easy. It's very easy to be demotivated lalo na pag pera pinag-uusapan may mga ibang taong involved especially when you're in a debt-free goal or in yun journey mo but I was determined to succeed and I'm just really happy I did so how do you set it? how can you set achievable financial goals? let's break it down into 8 steps Step number one is assess your current financial situation. You need to know how much money you're making, how much you're spending, and where your money is going. So create a list. Kung meron kang fixed income, it's very simple for you to identify your income na pumapasok every month. Yung mga hindi naka-fixed income, I really recommend that you find that month na nasa mababang range yung kita ninyo. Huwag nyong gawing baseline yung mataas na kita na month para meron kayong buffer. And then, assess how much you're spending and where your money is going. Choose a process. It's very important to choose a process that works for you. Kasi for me, while I was in this process, I was testing out a lot of apps. I was subscribing to a lot of apps. I even pay for some apps. But then, hindi siya nag-work sa akin. Parang ang complicated niya. Ang dahil mga categories. Maganda yung reporting. Pero hindi ako nagiging religious in tracking my expenses. So, I ended up with just the notes on my phone. 
the system that works for me is I just type in all of the expenses that I have pag naglalabas ako ng pera and I have a weekly financial hour or hours where I push all of those expenses in a Google Sheet and plan everything. So that's your step one. Assess your financial situation. Your step two is to identify your goal. Ano ba yung goal ninyo? Is it debt payment? You want to purchase something? Having an emergency fund? Choose a goal na align sa situation mo ngayon, sa values mo, and sa North Star mo. So, kung wala ka pang North Star, hindi mo pa alam yon yung concept na yon. listen to my very first episode to learn how you can identify your life goal. From there, you can zone in on your financial goal. So, ano ba yung samples ng financial goals? Ano ba yung mga bagay na pwede kong i-goal pagdating sa pera? Number one can be a savings goal. Kung wala ka pang emergency fund, savings, that is something that you can set a goal for. Kung meron kang mga utang, um, debt payment can be another goal. If you want to purchase something or meron kang pinag-iipunan, you want to buy a a house, a car, it can be an income goal or a, a savings goal as well. So, identify mo kung ano yung goal na gusto mong pag-focusan in the next coming months, in the next years. And step number three is make it clear. Make it specific, measurable, achievable, and time bound. So any mga sample na to? So paano ba tayo mag-set ng goals? If let's say for example, mag-set tayo ng savings goal, instead of writing down I want to have 6 months worth of savings. You can rewrite it as I want to have 180,000 worth of savings by February or kung anong month man yan. But make it specific. Kung 30,000 a month yung expenses mo, 6 months of that is 180,000. So, you can make a, you can identify a specific number and anong month mo siya gustong i-target na ma-complete. So, is that specific? Yes, it is measurable. And yung achievable and time-bound, this is something that you can only answer if you finished step one, hindi mo alam kung ano extra money or extra savings na pwede mong i-allot kung hindi mo alam yung financial situation mo. Or kung ano ba yung kailangan mong additional income to really be able to achieve this in a specific time span. So, let's say for example, debt payment naman, utang. Instead of writing a goal na I want to be debt-free, how you can write it is, I will be debt-free and complete paying off my 120000 in debt by October. So that gives you a deadline for yourself, helps you be accountable, and nalalatag din kung magkano ba talaga yung lahat ng responsibilities na kailangan mong bayaran when it comes to debt. Paano naman yung sample if you want to write a goal in purchasing something, a big one, a big investment. Let's say, I want to buy a condo. Instead of that, you can write a goal of, my goal is to save for 200000 down payment by end of year and afford the monthly amortization of 25000 for the next 20 years. So that gives you a very clear visual of how much do you really need to save to earn, to have in your bank, and to continuously have in the next 20 years before you commit to that big purchase. So those are just three samples of how you can write specific, measurable, achievable, and time-bound goals. Now, going to step four, we want to break it down into smaller steps. For me, I did it weekly. I had a weekly payment target. Na lahat, ito yung lahat ng bills ko for this week. Ito yung lahat ng mga kailangan namin bayaran for this week. Now from there, I create a weekly target income. 
from this bills that I need to pay, I need to make sure that I need to have this income para mabayaran ko lahat ng bills na yun. And again, assess the situation, what is realistic for you. Kung ano yung mga kakayanan mo, skill set mo, ano yung income streams na pwede mong asahan to be able to do that. And then really break it down into steps na makakaselebrate ka ng mini milestones mo. Step number five is to make it clear. Make a visual tracker. Pwede yan sa Google Sheets, ilista mo sa notebook. But you have to make it visual and be able to track it. Step number six is you have to keep assessing and adjusting. So weekly, may mga changes yan definitely, but you have to be open to it. Yeah, you need to keep evolving from it. Hindi yan parang ito yung goal ko set in stone. It will continue to evolve. Your financial situation will continue to evolve. There are things that we won't be able to control. So you have to be okay with that. And you just have to be continuously adjusting and reassessing. Step seven is find your push. I think this is very important kasi alam mo na kung ano yung gusto mo, but sometimes kailangan mo talaga ng motivation or accountability body to help you get there. There will be times that we will be demotivated, wala tayo sa mood, or when I was doing that free journey, yun yung pinapakinggan ko every single day while working almost eight hours a day. Para lang tumatak talaga ng tumatak sa isip ko yung mga bagay na halaw kang gawin. Pagdating sa pera, mamotivate ako. At masabi ko eventually that I'm that free. You can also find a partner that will support you. Make sure na hindi ka hahayaan mag-spend ng ibang bagay na hindi align sa goals mo. We can be sidetracked, we can be distracted with all of the things that we can be spending money on. Pero kung hindi naman yun align sa goals mo, it's good to have a partner that can remind you on that. And find a community, find a tribe that can help you be more motivated. You can join our Facebook group, Act to Achieve PH, our private community that you might be able to find accountability buddies that they can help you. And step number eight, very important, is to take action. Again, na-advocate ko yan forever talaga. It will never happen if ang goal ay magsistay lang as a goal and as a plan and words written on paper if you don't take action on it. So, it's important that break it down earlier, mga parts, break it down into smaller things na makakaya mong actionan and take action unti-unti until you get there. So those are the eight steps that you need to do to be able to set achievable financial goals. So just to give a little bit of recap, number one, assess your finances. Number two, make your goals measurable and achievable based on your current situation. And number three, start taking action. So ang actionable tip natin for this episode, start listing it down. Kung nasan ka man, get a sheet of paper, nasa computer ka, Google Sheet, open that, sa phone mo, open your notes, start listing down all of the expenses that you have in a month, all of the income that you're getting in a month, and all of the debts. So, hindi siya kailangan maging perfect. Meron mga bagay na hindi mo talaga maaalala ngayon. Huwag mo nang ipagpabukas kasi ganun din naman. <laughs> makakalimutan mo din yan. Babalik at babalik yan sa'yo. Ang importante, makapag-start ka ngayon na masimulan na siyang malista. Balikan mo na lang yung ibang mga hindi mo naalala o yung mga kailangan na bills na gusto mo makita bago ka mag-start magsulat. Pwede mo yung balikan, pero right now, habang excited ka pa about this episode, very fresh pa ang learning, you can start doing this actionable tip. If you need a template, you can go to the Goals with Anne website and click on free resources to download the personal finance tracker sheet that you can download for free. While you're doing your actionable tip, 
And gusto mo hong ita, gusto mo mag-take ng picture, very motivated and excited tayo. Share mo yan sa community, Act to Achieve PH, or tag me at Goals with Anne. I would be really excited to see them. So for every episode that we have, we have our hashtag Ask Anne portion where we answer listener questions. So if my question ka posted on our socials or group, Act to Achieve PH, Use the hashtag, hashtag Ask Anne, and you might be the next question we're answering in the next episode. So this question is from Carlo. Very good question to kasi alam ko maraming makakarelate dito. How do I prioritize my financial goals when I have multiple goals but limited resources? That's a very good question. I'm sure maraming makakarelate dito. Unang-una, na-identify mo na yung unang goal mo. Because you have limited resources, your first goal is to increase your resources, increase your income. Yun yung pwede mong simulan or kailangan mong simulan bago pa makapag-prioritize ng iba't ibang financial goals. Yun yung unang-una. Kasi very limited ka sa mga pwede mong gawing financial goals kung wala kang income. Kung wala kang resources, wala kang foundation na mapagkukunan ng mga financial goals na yan. So compute how much you need to make to live comfortably or to be able to pay your monthly responsibilities. Assess what you need to do to get to that income. So again, babalik tayo dun sa achievable. Hindi naman pwede na parang mag-expect ka ng times 10 na increase na income from what you're currently getting you have to be realistic and achievable depending on your capabilities and situation also. You can assess your current job if you're in a corporate setting and see kung ano yung mga pwede mong gawin to increase your income. You can upskill, focus on the skills that you can leverage on and find other ways to earn income. You can upskill and learn how to sell yourself, do side hustle, do business, and kung ano-ano pang mga pwede mong gawin to build on those resources, those things na makakatulong sa'yo para magkaroon ka ng mas maraming bala para unti-unti mong malatag yung mga financial goals mo. Then from there, pwede ka nang mag-prioritize kung alin ba dun yung mga goals na gusto mong i-pursue. I hope I was able to answer your question, Carla, and I hope other listeners find it helpful too. So to summarize this episode, setting achievable and financial goals starts with assessing your current financial situation. Track your progress, celebrate your milestones, and adjust on your plan as needed. Take action today to start working on achieving your financial goal. Thank you for tuning in and don't forget to subscribe and leave a review. If you have questions or comments, please reach out to me on social media at Goals with Anne or email me at hello at goalswithanne.com. Thank you everyone for joining me in one of the hottest topics in adulting, hashtag financial goals with me, Anne. And if they enjoy you, I would love to hear from you. So today we talked about the step-by-step guides in setting and achieving financial goals. What you need to do to get started. Remember that achieving your financial goal is a journey and not a destination. So with the right drive, motivation, and perseverance, it is possible to achieve financial freedom. See you on the next episode. I hope na motivate and excite kayo sa takeaways and action items natin for this episode. To be always updated on our ganaps, don't forget to follow me on IG, Facebook, TikTok, and you can also watch this episode on YouTube at Goals with Anne for your daily dose of motivation. To connect with accountability bodies and find your tribe, join ka na to our private goal achievement community at to achieve PH on Facebook. If natuwa ka, na-inspire ka, or na-excite ka ulit sa buhay because of this episode, let me know by giving it a rating and following the podcast. Just go to the podcast page if you are on Spotify, click follow, then click the ratings and give your feedback. Five seconds lang. It can go a long way in showing support 
get this podcast discovered by more people and you might just help others achieve their goals too. Stay tuned until next time. Thank you for listening. Don't forget, you need to act to achieve. Thank you.